Hey guys, it's Ragnarok here. Today I'm going to show you an alchemy overview for the Battle for Azeroth. So uh, first I'll get into the potions. So the potions, we've got our old traditional main stat potions again. So we've got agility, for example, increases agility by 900 for 25 seconds. Um, we've also got intellect, stamina and strength. If you don't prefer a main stat, you've also got bursting blood. Uh, imbues your blood with heat for 25 seconds and giving your melee attacks to create a burst of blood dealing 10,000 physical damage split evenly amongst enemies so it's like a cleave potion uh, potion of replenishment uh, elevated status focus restore mana similar to the old mana potion in a legion and we got rising death uh, giving your ranged attacks a chance to send out a death bolt that grows in intensity as it travels dealing up to 15k shadow damage and Steel Skin Potion, which is basically an armor potion for defensive. You still got your traditional mana potion, your healing potion, and rejuvenation potion. We've got four uh, utility potions. Uh, one gives you invisibility for 18 seconds, one gives you a faster movement speed, one uh, basically increases your stealth, <laughs> if yeah, it's good for rogues. Or, a, uh, or any stealth classes, like a druid or even shadow melding as a night elf. And you've got the sea mist potion, so basically you turn into like a, a cloud and you can slow fall um, from heights, float over water, etc. You can't use a mouth with this, so think of it like a priest levitate sort of thing. Um, the flasks, so the flasks um, basically increase your main stat by a lot. We've got intellect, we've got agility, We've got strength, and we've got stamina, just like the old traditional ones. As you can see, they require various amounts of herbs. Um, for the transmutes, we can still do similar things to what we could in Legion. Uh, Xu expulsum, I can't really say that word properly. Basically, it's just a crafting region. Um, it's soulbound, though, that's the annoying thing about it, but you need to use this for a few alchemy recipes. Um, for trinkets, for example, they require expulsions, but I'll get into the trinkets shortly. Um, we've still got cloth to skins, fish to gems, herbs to cloth, herbs to oil, meats to pet, so you can actually get random pets. Seven day um, cooldown there, but uh, pretty cool, that's something new. Uh, we've got all the cloth, all the gems, all the herbs, so basically you can transmute pretty much anything you want, which is pretty cool. And these all have daily cooldowns on them too. Uh, so the trinkets, we've got um, basically a versatility trinket, copies where his current flask buff, but at a fraction of the power, last 12 seconds. Um, basically, we've got uh, a chance to increase your strength, agility, or intellect by 521 for 15 seconds. Last stat's always chosen, and it also increases the effects of mana and healing potions by... 40%. Not definitely not a bad trinket to have. It's also BOE, so you can sell these on the auction house. And what else we got? We got um, a green trinket. So this is a lower trinket that you learn earlier on. It restores health whenever you kill a target. It's experience of honor. So it's basically a leveling trinket. And we've got um, another green one here. It's basically just a smaller version of the surging alchemist stones. So these two are more like max level. And these two are more for like leveling. And we've got herb tracking. So chance to bring back herbs from successful missions. Pretty cool. It's you put this on one of your champions, um, similar to how you equipped your champions in Legion. You can put this on your BFA champions. And yeah, and that's all the BFA ones I have. The only one that I don't have is the cauldron. And the cauldron, same thing as what it does in Legion. It requires a ton of flasks to make and um, some expulsum and hydrocore. I still have no idea where you get that. Oh, it looks like dungeons. I'm assuming heroic dungeons. Kind of, they, they look similar to um, Blood of Sargeras. But yeah, that's what you use to make the cauldron and then everyone in the raid group can uh, get their flasks. And it has 30 users, so keep that in mind. So that's the only unlearned BFA one that I've got. The other thing I'll cover is um, you still got the ranking systems. So uh, great for uh, profit alchemy, just because once you hit rank three, you can get procs. Um, so instead of you know getting one potion 
out of this you can get two three four five it can proc up to five times i believe and uh, if you get that it's basically pure profit for you if you're tending to make gold out of this and if you're using them or even better it saves you a lot of gold um this profession goes with herbalism obviously there are six new herbs in the game well from what I've discovered anyway, their ranking system is um, a little bit different to Legion. All it does is means that the higher rank you are, the more herbs you'll get out of each node sort of thing. I think um, the top one is three to six, whereas the, the rank one is only like one to three or something. So you can earn up to double once you hit rank three at each node. Anyways, guys, just thought uh, if you're thinking about leveling alchemy to make gold or to help out the guild, it's definitely still going to be a very good profession for all those things. Every single class in the game can make use of alchemy from their flasks and potions, so you'll have no worries about selling flasks and potions just like before. And if you get procs, easy gold, especially early on in the expansion if you're early enough to hit rank 3. Anyways, thanks for that, guys. I'll see you next.